Now, tension has hit one of the worst points for decades uh, between the two most populous countries in Asia. China and India accusing each other of violating the line of actual control. This runs along the disputed Himalayan border between them, and there was a deadly clash between their troops, the first in some 45 years. India confirms at least 20 of their soldiers died. China has not given an official confirmation, but the editor of the local Global Times cited casualties. This incident occurred on Monday in the Gowan Valley. A Reuters report cites an Indian government source as saying no shots were fired, but the troops were fighting with iron rods and stones, and their altercation apparently lasted for two hours. Tensions have been building up along this border since last month. That's when a fist fight reportedly took place. On this latest clash, however, the Ministry of External Affairs in India accused the Chinese side of departing from their consensus to respect the line of actual control here in Galwan Valley. They say in India the violent face-off occurred as a result of an attempt by the Chinese to unilaterally change the status quo there. They stress India is very clear all its activities are always within the Indian side of the line of actual control. China's foreign ministry, though, insists there were incursions, and they have demanded that India do not stoke the situation any further. Let's catch up now with our correspondent in Shanghai, Lynette Lim. Lynette, these are the worst clashes between them for decades now at this uh, very small but important border. What do we know about the facts so far, and what is China's real response? That's right, Christine. It's a very significant escalation because it marks the first loss of life since the border war in 1967. And although the Indian side said that there were 20 casualties um, in the Indian troops, uh, Indian media are reporting that uh, there are at least five Chinese uh, casualties. Um, this has not been confirmed by the Chinese side and, and uh, the an editor of uh, state media Global Times said that uh, the Chinese reason for not disclosing the number of casualties is that they did not want there to be a comparison or some sort of uh, casualty count comparison between the two countries. Um, both sides blamed each other for the escalation of conflict. It's believed to have taken place on Monday evening after commanders held meetings to try and de-escalate tensions. And as you mentioned, yes, um, they were using fists, they were using stones and iron rods because the de facto code at the border is not to use any firearms. So there was not a single shot apparently fired. Um, the spark is reportedly due to a road that was being built by the Indian Army to assess a remote airbase. Uh, and military analysts say that uh, even though the airbase is on the Indian side of the line of control, uh, the Chinese side have been trying to frustrate these efforts by the Indian Army to try and upgrade and, and build up their military capability in that area. Um, so Meanwhile, Chinese, the, the Chinese said, cites it that it was the Indian troops that first violated their promises and once again crossed the line of actual control and deliberately provoked and attacked uh, the Chinese forces. We heard also from our correspondent in Mumbai, Rebecca Bundan. Certainly it came as a surprise when we first heard from India that three soldiers had been killed. And then by the evening, uh, the number that came out from the army was 20 soldiers having been killed in this, uh, this combat uh, along the, the border. Um, and that came as a, as a big surprise because um, in recent weeks there have been those heightened tensions between China and India over these uh, border issues. But following high-level uh, military talks that took place between the two sides on June the 6th, there was uh, some kind of agreement that they would work towards uh, the process of uh, de-escalation of these tensions. Then for this uh, news to emerge that so many uh, soldiers had been killed, we have yet to actually hear from China in terms of their official number of casualties. But certainly those tensions have been uh, ongoing for, for decades, really, but they've, been, they've escalated in recent weeks after there was that, um, that fist fight that took place in May. But since then, really, what there was this move towards the de-escalation, um, and India has talked about... Um, this, uh, the following this incident, India has said that China uh, unilaterally attempted to uh, change the status quo, but the comments that have come out from China suggest that 
um, that it was actually Indian troops that moved over into what they considered their territory along the border, uh, and that this was what uh, resulted in it following them being provoked. So different stories coming out from, from both sides, and there's still more details to emerge. Narendra Modi has held meetings with the, the Home Minister, the Defence Minister, and also uh, military chiefs as well. And where does India see relations going from here on with Beijing? Absolutely. Certainly, analysts are saying that this latest incident is clearly a massive setback following the progress that was made at those informal uh, summits between the the two leaders, which really uh, was considered uh, significant uh, proce- uh, progress. Um, now it seems, uh, with the comments that have come out from India's Ministry of External Affairs, they've talked about the need to maintain peace and tranquility, um, and that they do want to to work on this via a dialogue, come to some kind of resolution via a dialogue. So um, that does suggest that they do want to to move towards a peaceful. Uh, resolution and certainly analysts are saying that they are hopeful of a uh, peaceful resolution uh, between the two sides. But we will have to see how this uh, develops now because this is seen as the the most deadly incident to happen along the border there uh, in several decades. So it's clearly a very, very uh, worrying uh, development. It also comes at a time, of course, when India is struggling with the the coronavirus situation, with the rise in the number of infections, uh, the economic impact this has had, particularly with the lockdown that's been in effect. So the Narendra Modi government is really struggling with that as well at the moment. So um, clearly, this is a a very, very worrying development and what's already a very difficult time for, for India.